Hey guys, so check it out. We have our DOC back. We have our DPF back from the shop. They were able to clean and bake everything out. Uh, the DPF, however, still passed, but it's barely. So it, this DPF may actually be no good, being that the truck has a hun uh, one million three hundred thousand miles on it. This filter may not pass. In other words. I have to put it all together, I gotta to put it in and do a parked regen. If it passes, fantastic, we're good to go. If it does not, then this DPF will need to get replaced, okay? The problem with that is these are very expensive. Uh, they'll run you about 3,000 bucks just for the DPF, which is this one. They're new only, no remands. You can get them out of the state of California, I'm sorry, if you can find them, and get them out of the state of California. You can get them aftermarket, which is cheaper. California does not allow aftermarkets uh, in their state. Surprise, surprise. So anyway, this is the DLC. Look at that, nice and clean. I didn't take any before pictures. I should have a uh, bit of a fail on my part there. And, and again, there's our filter. Very easy to figure out. Again, that's your serial number. That's what you're gonna input into the MCM. Uh, we're going to put all together. These are the sensors we're going to put. We're going to put all new temp sensors. We have our DOC inlet, DOC outlet, DPF, and we're also going to put new gaskets. There we go. We're going to put new gaskets along with it. We're going to put all together. We're going to put it back into the truck. I need to warm up the truck, do a good successful region. If it passes, fantastic. We don't have any more after treatment issues and we'll go from there. So again, I'm going to put it together and show you guys as best as possible how we do it. And again, this is EPA 07, 2008, 2009, 2010. So this is essentially non-deaf. Okay guys, so just to get you an idea of what you're looking at for the DPF cleaning and the amount of grams or soot that's removed, 265 is a lot. Normally I think it's about 100 and something, 120, maybe 100. Uh, DOC 176 grams. So again, a lot of soot being removed from that. Um, just to give you an idea of what comes out of it. So it's always good um, to test. You can see there, good flow test. It's always good to weigh it so you know exactly what comes out and you know how much it's clean or how much it's not clean. And the same thing goes with the DOC, but the most important thing is usually gonna be your DPF. So just to give you an idea. Okay guys, so you're also gonna need two of these gaskets. They come in a little set. There's the part number. And what you're literally gonna do is stack one on top of the other. Okay, again, really can't mess this up. You have the flow, so it tells you which direction everything's going. That's your inlet. Again, it's gonna flow through to the DPF, and it's gonna go on the outlet side. So, put it together. There's really no rhyme. There's no uh, right or wrong way to do this, okay? You don't have to line the inlet side with the outlet side because you can actually leave this loose a little bit and kind of just clock it depending on what you need based on the exhaust tubing that's gonna be on the outlet side. So. Pretty easy, one of the easiest ones to work on, I think. So again, we're gonna put this together, new sensors, install it, hopefully run a successful regen, and that's pretty much it. So again, put it, I'm gonna put it together. I didn't bring my GoPro, so I'm using my phone and uh, just working it. Okay guys, so we have everything connected, everything downstairs. We're still gonna have our lights, of course, because we still need to do a part regen. Okay, in order to clear the code, again, you have to do a successful regen temperature is low so I need to actually get the temperature up to at least 150 then I'm going to go ahead and use the software to do the regen so let's get the temperature up we'll plug in and we'll okay go guys so we are back we have our temperature at just a little over 150 degrees we still have the lights on I haven't done the regen again the whole thing is you have to warm it up we are currently connected to the truck and let's see what fault codes are remaining. I'm gonna see a bunch of fault codes, I'm gonna let you know now, and that's because we had the filter disconnected down at the bottom. We did move the truck, so again, that's gonna explain why we have all this crap going on underneath. So again, the only code currently active is going to be SPN 3719 FMI zero, soot level very high. And again, I explained that to you guys because that is, we are at zone five dpf zone five so what we're going to do is you're going to go here to your service routine you want to go to your dpf system and then you're going to click on start regen okay but before i do that of course truck is idling again everything looks good i don't have any issues make sure you have plenty of fuel before you do a regen uh, i typically like to have at least a quarter tank to half a tank just to make sure i don't run into any issues a lot of guys will bring it in down here when the light is on and I'll be honest with you, I will not touch it. I will not do a regen just because I don't want to risk damaging the customer's engine. So let's go ahead and start this parked regen. 
what I like to look at, I'm gonna show you this really quick. I'm gonna scroll down and you're gonna take a look here where it says regen time, zero seconds. When it starts, it will count in seconds. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 1600 seconds, I believe, depending on what the situation is. Uh, pressure looks good, if you can see from here. TPF pressure, DPF pressure looks good. Throttle valve, obviously nothing's happening there. These are our temps. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the regen. Uh, make sure, again, you have fuel. Make sure you are in a safe place. That's what this disclosure is for. You don't wanna burn anything or cause any damage. So let's get this started. Uh, again, start a timer so you know that you're within 30 minutes to roughly 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Anything more than that or less, something's going on. Throttle valve will start to close. Again, that's to bring up the temps. It's gonna get very loud, so keep that in mind. And uh, anyway, let's get this going. And I'll check in every now and then just to show you guys uh, the progress we are making. So again, we're still warming up. We're in the warm-up process. These are our DOC inlet temperature, DOC out, and DPF out. Again, these will rise together. This will always be last. Once this stays at, I think, about 600, 700 ballpark, this should start to jump up when the doser is starting to actually dose. So again, see there's your fuel doser percentage, there's your PSI, and again, Regen still has not started. This is just simply a warm up. Usually the first five minutes or so are warm up only. Once it does that, you're gonna see the counter start to go from there. So. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I don't want to bore you with the 30-40 uh, minute video. Yeah, so far so good. Our diesel doser is starting to work. Our temperatures are starting to go up. Our regen time has started 60 seconds. So we're about one minute into this. Again, nothing to write home about. We still need to make sure that it goes through successfully. If it does, the regen will stop on its own and all your codes will be clear and every, everything is right in the world. So again, just keeping you guys posted on what's going on. There's our temperature. Again, it's very, it gets very loud, especially on the first year models like the 2008, 2009, 2010. For some reason, those bands were extremely loud. So anyway, keeping you guys posted, I'll let you know what's going on. Again, we're 90 seconds in. Let's okay, keep so going. We are about five minutes into a regen, 374 seconds. Those are our temperatures. Those are our pressure. So, so far, so good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Uh, don't forget, if you're doing a regen, get out of the truck, look around, walk around, make sure you've got nothing else going on as far as any coolant leaks, oil leaks, fuel leaks, uh, make sure nothing catches on fire. So anyway, you're going to have nothing but time, especially with the regen. Uh, so again, just showing you guys what's going on. I did put a cardboard up front to help with the temperature to kind of get the engine temperature a little bit higher. Uh, but let's take a look at our current temps. DOC in 720. DPF, I'm sorry, DOC out 975 and DPF out 950. Call it that. There's our current timer. So we're roughly at 36, almost at 15 minutes, just a little bit shy of that. So, so far, so good. I do like that. Uh, let's see what other codes we have. Hopefully nothing. Okay, soot level high again. This will go away once you have done a successful regen. I said that before, I'll say it again. Uh, that is something else with the HVAC unit. That could be a sensor. That's something else probably on the cab side. So I'm going to keep you guys posted a little bit more. And again, we're still about 15 minutes in. We have maybe another 15 to 20 more minutes. Okay, guys, we are still here. Obviously still doing a regen. We are almost at, 20, at the 20 minute mark. So again, three, six, nine, 12. That puts us just a hair under 20 minutes. Look at our temperatures looking good, looking really nice. Our DPF inlet pressure looks good. Throttle valve is good. I don't see any deviation, like where it's fluctuating, you know, going up and down, which is good. I like that. Pressure is really good. Uh, again, we are roughly at 1200 seconds. So we're doing pretty good. I like the way things are looking for us. I did walk around the truck to make sure there was no leaks or any issues and everything looks really good. Okay, guys, it looks like the regen is done. I don't know why I still have a check engine light going on. I'll find out right now once the RPMs drop, but as you can see, I have nothing on my screen. I have nothing that's gonna tell me I have a check engine light other than the HVAC. Okay, our, we, our regen is done. Those are our temperatures. They actually start to drop pretty quick. This one will always take time to drop. This was always the last to go up and the, and the last to go back down. Again, our pressures look really good. 
I do like that we are at zone zero. So this looks like everything was successfully done. I'm very happy with this right now. So again, I'm gonna let this uh, cool off. Maybe when I cycle the key, this should go away again. I don't know why this is sticking around. Sometimes you cycle the key and it goes away. I don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, what I am gonna do is just clear the fault codes. That should get rid of some or should get rid of most. Um, again, depending, all trucks are a little different. There's times I've hit clear and they go away. Other times I hit clear and nothing goes away. So anyway, this is all set. Guys, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, let me know, hit me up. Guys, thanks for watching. Have nice a great day. Check it out. Like I said, you cycle the key, check engine light is gone, stop engine light malfunction, all the things are gone. This will still stay here because you have an issue with the HVAC. That is a different story for a different day. That's not why it's here. Okay, there we go. So I was right. HVAC, that's the code that's coming up. No more check engine light. The ABS will pop up. Once you run the truck a little bit over five miles per hour, maybe 10 miles per hour, that will go away. Again, provided you don't have any ABS codes. For some reason, when you use the Detroit software, it'll trigger that and then it goes away. So there you go. HVAC unit discharge temp sensor voltage above normal. So that might be a sensor itself. Uh, but again, that's a little bit out of what I do. And that's it. So guys, again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Appreciate the watches. Give it a thumbs up. Don't be shy.